So, the title of my sermon today is uh, Winds of Change, nor did I know that it was going to be a windy day, so. <laughs> but I really believe that that's sort of a word God has been speaking over his church, and I believe that God wants us to be participating in his transforming work in our lives. Amen? But he, want, he, he needs willing participants. If we resist change, we will delay what God wants to do in our lives and will delay some of the blessings that he has in store for us. But if we are able to follow him, to trust him, to apply faith to his word, literally says in Hebrews, it says, some, the word didn't prosper them because they didn't add faith to it. Our responsibility is to add faith to the word. The word is eternal. And it's true, but we have to believe and we have to put our trust in it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So, I believe, so we're going to go actually, I want to talk about three different kings in the Old Testament. We probably won't get to all three kings, but they're uh, kind of the beginning stages of when um, uh, there was a split of the kingdom. And we had the northern and the southern kingdom splitting after Solomon. And it's in Chronicles that we're going to be studying. And it's out, uh, out of Chronicles um, chapter, it's basically 12 through 16. We're going to kind of rewind for a minute and do kind of a, uh, um, a history, hif- history buff thing that I sometimes do. But, uh, but before we go there, I want to talk about some things. God, do you guys realize that God has created you guys for a purpose? You guys, we've talked about that many, many times, right? He has a plan and a purpose. Those plans are to prosper you and not to harm you, to bring you hope, amen, amen, and a good future. That's what the Word says. But not only that, but he, he, you literally, it says in Ephesians that you're his craftsmanship created for good works. You have been created to have good works, amen? amen. Sometimes we get that confused and we think our good works are um, a requirement for salvation, But that's not what we're talking about here. Once God redeems us, because Ephesians 2 talks about that, how it's by grace you've been saved through faith because it's the gift of God. Amen? It's that gift. It's that gift of God. And then it keeps going on, and then it says you are God's craftsmanship created for good works. So if we are created for good works... The Bible says that we have a responsibility, and we were, talk, we were just praying about that this morning. Laura just kind of hit on that. I was like, oh, that's good. <laughs> and I want to impart to you guys that God is calling you to a responsibility, a responsibility to change the world, to change your community, to change your families, to change your life, to change your heart. That's our responsibility. Amen? The Bible says that we are light unto the world. And think about light for a second. And what does light do? Light transforms. It brings light. It brings life. Because when we see areas of the world or in the deep parts of the sea where light can't penetrate down into and there's no life. It's dead and it's desolate. But where there is life, there is abundance. It transforms. We see life teeming. Actually, some scientists believe to think that life really you know, um, is supported by the sun through plants and how that whole cycle happens. We obviously know that life is supported through the Word and through God, but in the natural, we also see a representation of that. Amen? And God says for us to be light, we need to be changing our environment. Just as light changes its environment, God calls us to change our environment. Amen? Amen? Amen. And he also calls us to be salt. He says to be the salt of the world. And that is an interesting thing, isn't it? But salt gives flavor, right? It gives flavor. It improves. It's, we're called to improve our surroundings. Amen. And it also preserves. It actually protects from moral decay or spiritual decay. God wants us to be that salt and that light in the world to not only to preserve, but to improve and to change. Amen? And it starts with us. So we know that we are sent with a purpose, 
And there really is no other option around that. Either we can refuse what God has called us to do, that we have been agents from heaven sent down to earth, and we only have a short time to make an impact and to prove the living conditions here before we, are re we return back to our heavenly home. And we are accountable before the King. We're accountable before the King. Amen? Amen. I love that. It literally says in Romans 11, uh, 29, it says, the gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable. Irrevocable. And that's, 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 a, that's a blessing and also uh, a scary thing all at the same time. Because God won't alter that. He's holding us responsible to the call. He's holding us responsible to the gifts that he has imparted to his children. He literally says, I have gifted you with incredible talents that no one else in this world can do as good as you can at this time, at this place, at this just blimp or, or just spot of time where you can come and you can make that difference through me. Amen? Amen. And God is doing that. And he says that he will not revoke those gifts. He won't change his mind on that. He, he has purposed that before the foundations of the earth. He thought of you before he even breathed life into existence. The part you will play in time. Amen? So think about this for a minute. Think about this. Put your parental caps on for a minute. Most of us are parents or in the room. If we're not, you know, we can definitely relate. But as a parent... And, and, and if you aren't a parent, think about it as training somebody that you need to have a skill within work. But as a parent, what's easier to do? Do it yourself or to get your kids to do it? <laughs> think about that for a moment. My wife always says, it's just easier for me to do it. I'm just going to get it done. It's a lot faster. I'm not going to involve the kids on this because it's going to be lickety split. And it's just, and, and a lot of times my kids will bring resistance to what, what my wife wants them to do. If it's sweep the floor or vacuum or mom, put away the dishes. There's a bunch of grief that happens sometimes with my, with, with my kids. Right, Caden? <laughs> He's looking at mom right now, looking for a response. <laughs> That's a dollar. I owe him a drink. <laughs> But the amazing thing is, so, so we know that it's actually more difficult in many ways for us to involve our children into making a change within our household. Well, think of it the same way with God. It actually would be easier for God to just get it done himself. It would be much, much easier for him to get it done himself. But he wants his children to be involved and participate in his kingdom. God isn't looking to get it done and do the easy. He's never interested in the easy. He's always interested in the right. And it is right for him to get his children involved and to work for his kingdom. Amen? And to make a difference and to make a change. And that is what he is doing in this world today. And how many of you guys know that our kids can be messy at times? Right? I remember being a kid, so if you don't have kids, you can relate because you were a kid. Or you are a kid. But we are experts at making messes, right? We are experts at making messes. And the amazing thing is, is, <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going with this, but... <laughs> But even as parents, it's still our duty, regardless of how big the mess is, we still have to involve our kids and get them to, to work. Even though they might be going 10 steps backwards and only one step forward, we're involved in this process for them to be able to learn through it. Even learn through the messes. If you guys understand where I'm going with this. Um, and God, in many ways, does the same thing. He knows he knows that getting his children involved are going to make messes at time, but it is necessary and it's a part of the process for him to mature his children. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? 
We, um, we were doing just something last night with um, our, our nieces and nephews. We had them over. You saw them in the front row. But um, we had them over, and we asked them. Uh, my wife bought some gingerbread houses, and she wanted them to make these uh, gingerbread houses. And we had frosting and all the sorts of different candy. And we put it all on the table. And we're, she was working with them, and my kids were working with them. And it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. But at the same time, it was a humongous mess. There was bath time afterwards. There was cleaning the kitchen table, the floor, and uh, even ourselves at time because we had frosting everywhere. But the reward was worth it. It was worth it. It was always worth it. And you, God knows. It's, it's the amazing thing is, is God is declaring that you're worth having him involve you in the work of his kingdom. Amen? 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 And God has placed that role. There is no excuses. And I believe that God has you guys for, here for a reason because you guys are leaders. I believe you're leaders of your community. You're leaders within the body. You're leaders within your family. God has placed a responsibility on his children for growing us up, for maturing us, for for giving, uh, teaching us so that we can learn from him, and then also to impart that to others and to get involved. Amen? Amen. Amen. Ministry, I heard actually, I think it was from Blake last week we were talking, and he said ministry is messy. Ministry is messy at times. The church can be messy at times. But here's a revelation. <laughs> If church, and this is a revelation I was thinking about from that statement that Blake made, but if church is too neat, if it's too sterile, if it's way too organized and too boxy, God isn't working in that. God isn't working in that. God wants His church to get involved, to reach out to the lost and the poor and the needy and the hurting and the broken. He wants us to get involved. And that can create messes. It can create messes. But I believe that this is the year that the, this church gets involved. I believe this is the year that God is calling us to participate in all sorts of things God's, are do, God's doing outside of these four walls. We've been, we've been celebrating Jesus in these four walls, and I believe a lot of us celebrate Jesus and, and participate in his ministry, maybe in our workplace or maybe in our families and other things, but God is calling for bigger things this year. I, I believe that the vision and the dreams are enlarging in God's kingdom. And he wants us to reach more out to the community, to get more involved, to um, literally be displaying or dis, uh, showing God's love for our neighbors, our friends, our school, whatever it may be, whatever, whatever arena God has placed you in or whatever arena God is calling you to do, he wants you to get in there. And he's not worried about the mess. God works in the mess. Amen? God works in the mess. Believe me, I understand that because he uses me. And all, every week, I, I think I ask God at least once a week, why God me? Because I can make a lot of messes all the time. I can trip over my own feet faster than anyone else maybe in this room. But God still uses me. And he still says, Josh, you are called for a purpose and a reason and that you're going to be used regardless of the messes. He doesn't want the mess, but sometimes the messes are necessary. Amen? Amen? So we can't be afraid. As a church, once in a while, this church might get a little messy coming up in the future here. But it's good and it's necessary, and God's going to work in that mess. It might get messy in your family's lives. When you start witnessing to your families, there might be some persecution that happens. The Bible says that, you know, if you desire to live a godly life, that, you, that there will be persecution. First Timothy, I think, that it says that. It says there will be, there, there will be persecution. It will get messy when you go out into the world. But God doesn't care about that. There's actually blessings in that. Blessings in that persecution. And God will use that to literally show our authenticity to him. 
Because when things get tough, things get hard, there's pressure on us. It gets difficult. The world watches with more intensity. It watches us closer to see how we're going to respond. And if we continue to persevere and respond the way that God has chosen us to and equipped us to, the world is going to take notice and it's going to leave them with a decision to make. But they will be better informed to make it as long as we're doing our job. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Another thing that um, was um, interesting that I was just thinking about as an illustration is, is God, God just kind of put the illustration of my wife. She loves gardening. And when she gardens, um, there's a lot, of, a lot of weeds to pull out. In this world, we know that this world's getting darker. You can just turn on the news. You can, you can turn on your internet. You can read the highlights in the, in the, in the um, you know, basically the event stories and different things that are happening within, uh, within the world today. And we can see all of these um, perversions taking place that are attacking our children, our schools, our families, our homes, our communities, our environments. And these are, these are strategic moves by the enemy. They're strategic moves by the enemy. And we see that happening. And God has called us, just like my wife, to go into that garden. Because if the garden is untended, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be overgrown. The weeds are going to come in and they're going to choke everything out. And we are called to be gardeners of this world. We're called to get down and get messy sometimes, to get in that dirt and to pull out them roots and to make a standard and to call for a standard to say, look, this isn't okay. This isn't going to benefit you. You're going to hurt yourselves. You're going to hurt yourself by living that way and you're rejecting God's word. You're rejecting his design on your life. Amen? Amen. And that might be in our families, which is one of the hardest places to witness. It might be in our workplace where we're going to be persecuted and maybe be overlooked for some reason. But God says it's necessary, and he's placed us with that responsibility not to compromise. To not to compromise. And to get in there and get them weeds out and make that garden as beautiful as we possibly can. As beautiful as we possibly can. God desires to work in us, and he desires to work through us. And that principle applies in both. In our lives, we're going to have some weeding to do in our heart because the enemy continually tries to plant seeds in our life. Seeds of doubt and despair and shame and guilt, condemnation of temptation and, and, and um, all sorts of different perversions that he puts into our, uh, our hearts and lies. And we have to continually keep weeding them out of our lives and out of our hearts. And then also, though, it doesn't end there. I think that's where the church kind of stops sometimes. Church says, okay, as long as I'm, I'm doing some self-weeding, I'm okay. But God never says that. He says to get into the mess of this world and start doing some weeding in the world, too. Start working in the world that he has planted us in. Because we can make a difference, and God wants us to make a difference. Amen? I'm going to skip over some of them scriptures just for time's sake. So, uh, um, John 16 says, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome this world. We, we know we have a power that overcome. It's an overcoming power. Amen. It is the very key. That's right. It's the very key. We were talking about in men's group this week, and we we're talking about kingdom men and how we're supposed to get involved and be part of certain different ministries and outreaches within our community. And that God says that, you know, He will build His church. He says, On this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And what does that mean? Is when we are going and we're, we're breaking forth. And we're living for the kingdom. We are being the church that God created us to be because you are the church. It's not here. It's not a building. It's us. It's what God is doing as a body. 
He says, when the enemy comes to, stop, to try to stop you and to box you in or to cage you in, not going to work. You're going to kick that gate in. It literally says in that passage that God gives us the keys to open them doors. He cannot stop. He will not, he will not win. He's already defeated. Christ has done it for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Get excited. Get excited, people. <laughs> Amen. Matthew says this. It talks about a speck and a plank. And it was talking about, you know, make sure you remove the plank out of your eye before you try to remove your brother's speck in his eye. But it never says not to give up on the speck. It never says that. It says just make sure that you have a clear, a clear heart. That you do a self-cleansing before you worry about helping them. But we're still, we're still responsible for helping our brother. We're still ha- responsible for helping remove that speck out of his eye after God works in our life. So God wants to work in both arenas of our life, both arenas in our life. I saw a T-shirt that said, um, we were down in um, Tennessee, and I saw a T-shirt, a T-shirt that said, not today, Satan. I, lo- I like that. It says, not today, Satan. It was in big, bold <laughs> Bold letters, and I believe that should be our that should be our battle cry every morning. Not today, Amen. not today, and not forever. Amen. You are already defeated, and you belong under my foot. Amen? Amen. And I believe the greater the risk we take, the greater the reward that will come. Amen. 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 The greater the risk we take, because that's an element of faith that God calls us to live by, and God usually calls us to greater things than we can even ask or imagine as we just prayed about. Greater things. God wants to release this incredible work on your life. But we have to be willing to trust Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. So this brings me to the passage, and I'm just going to... Okay, so, so it says, For the eye of the Lord runs to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Whose heart God is looking for children that hearts are loyal to him this year. That, I believe, is literally the scripture God placed in my heart for this year for this church. God is seeking after loyal hearts. He's looking for loyal hearts that are willing to take the responsibility God has placed on their shoulders and to move forward in faith, to move forward in faith for his kingdom, to share and to be reckless even with our love at times, to transform lives, to transform families, to set people free like Jesus did. That is God's heart. That is our Father's heart. He didn't see his children in trouble, and he said, well, that's, that's up to them. Sorry, guys, you made the mess. you got to clean it up. That's not God's heart at all. He got down into the earth and he got dirty with it. He literally took on the the, the sins of the world and put them on his shoulders and carried it on a cross to Calvary and died on our behalfs so that we can live free. And then he sets us free and then he calls us to bear our own crosses. We need to go and we need to get involved in people's lives. And even though it might be painful or hard at times, God still has called us to do that. And he says he'll also equip us and give us the necessary tools and abilities to be able to bear that. Amen? Amen. Amen. So he's looking for loyal hearts that will trust him. That will trust him. Amen? Amen. Don't let the fear of persecution scare you away for what God wants to do. Because he has something greater than that persecution on the other side. There's something greater for you on the other side of that persecution. He is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So we need to make a stand. We need to make a stand today. Make a declaration today that I'm for God. God is on my side. I'm going to make a difference. Amen? 
I don't know if I even want to go into my, my, my message today. That was my introduction. <laughs> amen. I heard an amen out there. 